In this video, we're going to focus on problems associated with implicit differentiation. So given the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 100, find dy dx. Now I want to go over a few things. Let's say if you differentiate x cubed with respect to x, you know the answer is 3x squared. But what about if you differentiate y cubed with respect to x? It's going to be 3y squared times dy dx. And for instance, if you differentiate, let's say, r to the fourth power with respect to x, it's going to be 4r cubed times dr dx. For this example, dx over dx will cancel, so there's no point in writing it. So keep that in mind. So when doing implicit differentiation, we're going to differentiate this function with respect to x. So every time you differentiate a y variable, you need to add the term dy dx to it. So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides with respect to x. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of y squared with respect to x is 2y times dy dx. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So now let's isolate dy dx. So let's take the 2x and move it to the other side. So if we subtract both sides by 2x, on the left we'll have 2y dy dx, and on the right, negative 2x. Now let's divide both sides by 2y. We could also cancel negative 2. So dy over dx is equal to negative x over y. So now that we have dy dx, we can move on to the second part of the problem. Calculate the slope at the point 6, 8. So let's evaluate dy dx at that point. So x is 6 and y is 8. So we need to reduce this fraction. 6 is 3 times 2 and 8 is 4 times 2. So we could cancel a 2 and so dy dx is equal to negative 3 over 4 at the point 6 comma 8. And that's the answer. Now let's move on to number 2. Given the equation x cubed plus 4xy plus y squared is equal to 13, find dy dx. So let's differentiate everything with respect to x. So the derivative of x cubed, that's going to be 3x squared. Now what about the derivative of 4xy? Because we need to use the product rule. So let's treat 4x as if it's f and y as if it's g. So here's the form of the product rule. The derivative of f times g is going to be the derivative of the first part, f prime, times the second, plus the first part, times the derivative of the second part. So the derivative of 4x is 4, and we're going to leave the second part the way it is, that's g, and then plus f, the first part, times g prime, the derivative of the second part. The derivative of y is 1, but with respect to x, it's going to be 1 times dy dx. And the derivative of y squared is going to be 2y dy dx. And the derivative of the constant 13 is 0. Now, we need to isolate dy dx. So what I'm going to do is, out of these two terms, I'm going to take out dy dx. So I'm going to have 4x plus 2y. Now every term that doesn't have a dy dx, I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to move 3x squared plus 4y to the right side. They're positive on the left side, but they're going to be negative on the right side. So I have negative 3x squared minus 4y. Now I need to divide both sides by 4x plus 2y. And so now I have the answer to the first part of the problem. So dy dx is equal to negative 3x squared minus 4y divided by 4x plus 
2 watt. Now there's nothing else that we can do here to simplify this expression. So all we can do is evaluate it at the point 1 comma 2. So x is 1, y is 2. So 1 squared is 1 times negative 3, 4 times 2 is 8, and then 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 3 minus 8 is negative 11, 4 plus 4 is 8. So dy dx is equal to negative 11 divided by 8 at the point 1 comma 2. Number 3, find dy dx by implicit differentiation. So let's differentiate both sides with respect to x on 5 minus x squared is equal to sine and then x y squared. So the derivative of 5 is 0 and the derivative of negative x squared that's negative 2x. The derivative of sine is cosine. Now according to the chain rule we need to keep the inside function the same and then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that is the derivative of x y squared. So we need to use the product rule. So the derivative of the first part x is 1 times the second y squared plus the first part x times the derivative of the second part. The derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dx. So we need to isolate dy dx. Well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by cosine xy squared. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to distribute it. I'm going to distribute cosine to what I have here. So negative 2x is equal to y squared cosine xy squared and then plus 2xy cosine xy squared times dy dx. So I'm going to take this term and move it to that side. So I have negative 2x minus this term. And that's equal to 2xy cosine times dy dx. Now the last thing I need to do is divide both sides by 2xy cosine. So the final answer is negative 2x minus y squared cosine xy squared divided by 2xy cosine. And so that's how you can use implicit differentiation with uh, trigonometric functions. Now let's try it one more problem. Let's say if we have x cubed plus y cubed is equal to let's say 9. Find d squared y over dx squared and evaluate it at the point 1 comma 2. Go ahead and try that. So first we need to find the first derivative. So let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The derivative of y cubed is 3y squared times dy dx. And the derivative of a constant is 0. Now let's subtract both sides by 3x squared. So on the right side, it's negative 3x squared. And then let's divide both sides by 3y squared. So dy dx is going to be negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. So dy dx is negative x squared over y squared. So we have the first derivative at this point. We need to find a second derivative. So what we need to do is differentiate this function. So the derivative of dy dx with respect to x 
is going to be d squared y over dx squared. And then we need to use the quotient rule for negative x squared over y squared. So the derivative of f over g is going to be g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. So in this example, f is negative x squared. g is y squared. So f prime is going to be negative 2x, and g prime is 2y dy dx. So let's use this formula. So let's start with g, which is y squared times f prime. So that's negative 2x minus f, which is negative x squared, times g prime. So that's 2y dy over dx, all divided by g squared, which is y squared squared. Now, keep in mind, dy dx is negative x squared over y squared. So we can replace that with negative x squared over y squared. So the second derivative is going to be, we can write this as negative 2xy squared. And then these two negative signs will become positive. So we have plus 2x squared y. And then we're going to replace dy dx with negative x squared over y squared. And then y squared squared is y to the fourth. At this point, we could cancel a y. So we have negative 2xy squared. And then 2x squared times negative x squared, that's going to be minus 2x to the fourth power. And we still have a y left over on the bottom, all divided by y to the fourth. Now, to eliminate the complex fraction, let's multiply the top and the bottom by y. So we're going to have negative 2xy to the third minus 2x to the fourth power over y to the fifth power. Now, if we want to, we can take out a negative 2x. So the second derivative is going to be negative 2x, and then we're going to have y cubed. And then if we take out negative 2x from this term, negative 2x to the fourth divided by negative 2x, the negative 2s will cancel. 4 minus 1 is 3. So that's going to give us x cubed, all divided by y to the fifth power. Now, we have the point 1 comma 2. So now that we have the second derivative in its simplified form, we can evaluate it at 1, 2. So let's replace x with 1 and y with 2. So we have negative 2 times 1, and then 2 to the third is 8. 1 cubed is 1. 2 to the fifth power. That's 2 times 2 which is 4 times 2, that's 8 times 2, 16 times 2 is 32. 8 plus 1 is 9, and 32 is 16 times 2. So we could cancel a 2. And so the final answer is negative 9 over 16. So that's the value of the second derivative at the point 1, 2.